Hi, and welcome to the Bible Tribe with Seeing Deep Ministries, where you see deep in a shallow world and overcome the battles of the mind with the Word of God. How do you handle it when you suffer because of someone in church who spoke against you? Ever dealt with that? I thought so. Sometimes persecution from within the flock can cause us to become disillusioned and to ultimately question God. But rather than questioning God, perhaps we should question our expectations. We're reading today from Jeremiah chapters 19 through 24, and the verse of the day is Jeremiah 20 verse 9. But if I say I will not remember him nor speak any more in his name, then in my heart it becomes like a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am tired of holding it in, and I cannot endure it. In context, Jeremiah was being persecuted by Pashur, who was a priest. This is sometimes the kind of persecution that catches us off guard, right? When we endure criticism or suffering at the hands of those who are supposed to be on the same team. We're all on the Jesus team, right? Well, our expectations can lead us away from our purpose as we entertain the discouraging noise all around us. When troubles are stirred up by those we trusted and we feel in shock from the betrayal, we can know that Christ endured the same thing, only much worse. This should be our expectation. Spiritual warfare, struggle, but a God who helps us to overcome. Jeremiah realized that being mad at God did not help his situation any. Suffering is not God's fault, nor is persecution. And when we give in to the accusation against God that the enemy incites, we go off mission. When we rise above people's view of us, we are free to live for Christ. While we likely do not appreciate their persecution, the troubles they cause become a tool to sharpen us for the master's use. Beautiful character happens when we don't resist hard places, but surrender to Christ in them. I chose the key word for remember because this is what helped to transform Jeremiah, remembering who God is and the point of it all, his glory, not ours. Jeremiah's heart cry in the verse for today reminds me of the scripture in Luke 19 verses 39 to 41. But some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he answered, if they remain silent, the very stones will cry out. As Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. We were made to praise God. The troubles of this life silence us and our witness when we look at the troubles instead of coming to God. The Hebrew word for remember is the word zaher, And it means to call to mind, remind. We need to provoke ourselves by intentionally remembering all that God has done and remind ourselves of His character and promises and faithfulness. Doubt and unbelief are spawned by troubles, but they can be silenced by remembering the truth which dispels all lies. The thought of the day, rather than questioning God, we should question our expectations. And the application, don't give in or give up just because troubles come your way. Big or small, all troubles do not have to defeat us if we come to God for help. Don't be mad at God because of difficulty. Praise Him through it for how He will use it ultimately for your good and His glory. Amen. Go with God and His precious word, friends. Tune in tomorrow as we head back into the book of Psalms.